Well, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this 2022 Ford Mustang GT. Big shout out and thank you to Mooresville Ford for providing this new Mustang for today's video. Definitely take a look at their website and check that out in the link down below. And the model that we're looking at today is a GT Premium finished off in shadow black and has an MSRP at $49,000. Underneath the hood of the Mustang GT, you're gonna find a naturally aspirated five liter, eight cylinder engine. This V8 pumps out 460 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque. And in this particular case, it's paired to a 10 speed automatic transmission. A six speed manual is still available though. Since all the power to the rear wheels and with a curb weight around 3,800 pounds, you're looking at zero to 60 in the low four seconds with a quarter mile time at 12.2. It tops out around 155 miles per hour and then running on a 16 gallon fuel tank, you can still get 15 miles per gallon in the city with 24 out on the highway. The overall length is 188.5 inches with wheelbase at 107.1. Height is 54.3 and width is 75.4 inches. The Mustang GT also features ventilated disc brakes in all four corners with a 14 inch rotor up front and a four piston caliper and single piston rear calipers with 13 inch rotors. And then now moving to the exterior styling with the 2022 Mustang GT. This is a very sharp looking muscle car with a ton of bold lines. You can see the LED headlights and I love the LED daytime running lights in the inside corners. They have that really cool three bar design and then a blacked out housing. There's all sharp lines within the bumper, leading to our turn signals with an amber color. Then you'll even see an air inlet on the farthest sides that has a very cool contour. The GT gets a front splitter finished off in a satin black plastic material, protrudes outward for more aggression. And we have a satin black plastic piece in the lower grill with a ton of openings for more cooling. You can see the chrome Mustang Pony logo right in the center, and then huge openings for more cooling to the radiators, and then a full gloss black grill. There's really sharp lines within the front end, and it certainly has a ton of road presence and a wide appearance. You'll see two heat extraction vents in the top portion of the hood with really sharp lines running towards the windshield. I like how long the hood is. It gives it that muscle car appearance, and there's a lot of great contours that make the front end stand out. And as you make your way to the side profile, we get a set of 20 inch wheels in all four corners. They're a split five spoke, finished off in a gunmetal color. They look very nice contrasting with the black paintwork. And then we get the 5.0 badge on the rear of this front fender and a sharp line cutting towards the door all the way through the door handle. We get a matching one in the lower portion of the doors as well as a large side skirt to match that front splitter. Really sharp lines in the side profile and then you get a matching one over the rear fender arch and the one behind the rear wheels. The Mustang GT of course has that classic fastback design. Looks very good in this coupe form. And I love how the roof line slopes towards the trunk. We also get a set of gloss black door handles to match the paintwork, as well as body colored mirror caps with plastic trim underneath that and an integrated LED turn signal. You can see black trim around the windows, and then a body colored shark fin antenna up top. There's more sharp lines in the roof that match what we saw up front on the hood. Then we get our third brake light in the top part of this rear glass. You can see how the sharp roof lines cut their way into the trunk, and then we get a body colored lip spoiler mounted on top. I love the LED taillights you'll see. They match those daytime running lights we saw up front in the headlights, and they are three dimensional. You can see your GT logo right in the center with a standard backup camera above that. And then moving down below, we have a really sharp line in the bumper, your license plate area, and then parking sensors all within the rear bumper. You get a massive rear diffuser finished off in that same plastic material that you saw up front. Reverse light is in the center. You get some sharp fins and then your dual quad exhaust. So there's a good look at the exterior with the 2022 Mustang GT Premium. Very sharp looking muscle car for sure. I like all these sharp lines and these wheels look pretty nice against the color. So we have Ford's key fob. We get the Mustang logo on one side then all the brushed aluminum colors for the buttons. I can go ahead and lock the car then double tap on the engine start button. Get that coyote motor roaring to life. Wow, already such a good sounding engine. We can automatically shut it off then. And then keeping the car locked, I just grab the door handle, it'll unlock. We can check out this interior. GT premiums are gonna get a black leather interior and you're also gonna see some silver accents and white stitching all throughout. 
We get a full black door panel with the leather material all in the center. There's some perforated design as well as your stitching, and then some good padding for your armrests. We get the silver color around your grab handle, then your window controls and mirror controls lock and unlock with memory seating as well as the release handle, then part of the speaker system and then a little bit of storage. We have Mustang written out on this door sill, finished off in silver. And then all of your power controls are on the left side of the seat with manual recline. You can see the smooth leather with all of the stitching and a really cool perforated design all in the center. Really good bolsters too, for not even being the Recaro seats, but I really like the design you see. There's more stitching along the headrest and then spinning around to the black leather steering wheel with silver trim. And then now inside the Mustang GT, keeping my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. This particular spec is the full LCD gauge cluster. It's about 12 inches. You can see right now it's in the standard drive mode with your tack on the left, speedometer on the right, and then a few vitals down below. There is a center area that you can configure using the controls on the right side of the screen. So if I go into this menu now, you can see a few things that will come up like performance information within the car. And then if we change your drive modes, that's how you actually change what you see. We have a toggle switch on this right side from normal mode into the sport mode and you can see how it changes up a little bit. Very cool the way the tachometer is now. And then going to the next driving mode with the toggle switch, you can see how everything is going to change in track. We get a full tack now, I can hit okay, and you can toggle into your drag strip mode. We have a wet mode, and then back into normal. And then on top of that, if you tap the Pony logo right down here on the steering wheel, you can see what we get. We have a my mode. You can go into your exhaust mode as well. We have a quiet mode for it, which will close the valve which you already heard, and then going into the track mode. <laughs> Way louder. And then back down here, we have track apps as well, accelerator timer, brake timer, we have our line lock, and we have gauges you can go into and configure those. So all sorts of different things, you can even change the color. And then taking a look at the steering wheel, we have the Mustang logo in the center. We have controls on the left for Bluetooth and audio, as well as your cruise control settings, and a few more over on the right. The automatics are gonna get a steering wheel mounted set of paddle shifters. They're plastic and they are a few inches, so actually pretty decently sized. Then we get our turn signal stock over on the left with your wiper blades over on the right. And then underneath on the left side of the steering wheel, we have our trunk release button. We can open this up and we get a little bit of storage. Then we have all of your headlight controls, one of the air vents, then a nice design coming around this dashboard. You can see the stitching and the black leather design. We have Mustang on the right and you get that traditional double bump like the classic Mustangs. Really cool design with the three air vents and then a brushed aluminum carbon fiber type look for that plastic trim. And then moving to the Sync 3 navigation system, we have our navigation screen set up. You can tap into audio as well. We have all the climate controls that will come up. You can adjust everything, heated steering wheel. We have our phone integration and then the navigation screen for full screen, apps icon, and then more. So pretty good screen. If we go ahead and put it into reverse, our backup camera will pop up. We have our guidelines as well as the sensors. We have all of your radio controls in the center with the on off, different track and seek, tuning, and then your volume. We have heated and ventilated seats with the controls right here. You can adjust your temperature right here for the dual zone and it also comes up on the screen when you do anything. We have all the different zones, fan speed, on off. Then you can see all these toggles. We have our start stop button, hazards, then we have a traction control that you can adjust. You can just go up and down to turn that on and off. We have a steering wheel mode control as well. We have comfort, normal, and then a sport. And then of course our drive modes. We have a little bit of storage with a 12 volt and USB. The center shifter now has some black leather on the shift boot and the aluminum trim. We got a manual parking brake, two cup holders, and then more stitching and leather on this armrest. We have a pretty good amount of space in here with another USB port. And then going over to the right side, the glove box is a pretty good amount of space. And then one last look of the 2022 GT's interior. Really nice the way the seats are all laid out. And it's pretty much the same as the current generation. So they haven't really changed anything for 2022, but nonetheless, a pretty nice car. 
We got a frameless mirror and then dome lights up top with your controls and then a garage door opener on the sun visor. The Mustang is also a four seater. There's a grab handle on the back side of the front seats that you can lift up. It'll get the seat a little bit out of the way. And then we get the same design on the rear seats. They're buckets actually. They look really cool with huge bolsters and the smooth leather and then all the perforated leather and stitching. So we are now sitting in the back of the Ford Mustang. I'm five foot 11 sitting back here. Needless to say, it's pretty tight. However, it is certainly usable. If I put the driver's seat back, my knees are nice and squished from the backrest, but I am fitting back here. I wouldn't want to be here maybe longer than like 30 minutes or so. Uh, it is usable, you know, if you slouch a little bit and wrap your knees around. But nonetheless, you know, we have a nice little armrest, plenty of windows, even we got a little hook if you want to have something stored back here, like some clothes. And then you can see how these seats actually fold down independently. If I pull this lever, you can even get access to the back from being sitting back here. And then moving to the trunk space, we have a button on the key fob, the one in the interior, or there is one on the back of the bumper. We can press the button, it'll pop, and we get a pretty good amount of space in here. For being a smaller car, the Mustang really does utilize this space. And then with those seats folded down, the only way to do that is the latch that's on the inside. We can now get a better understanding of the space you're gonna get when you fold them down. They fold nearly flat, and we have a pretty good opening into the trunk. So for being a two-door car, the Mustang's actually pretty usable. All right, guys, so we are setting off now in the 2022 GT. So we're just in normal automatic mode. The exhaust is in the normal mode as well. Let's get a bearings for our comfort levels in this car. These seats are really nice. I've always liked the standard seats you get, especially in leather. I think they really are soft and comfortable. You can get them into a pretty good position. You do get manual recline, which is kind of a downfall, but honestly, you can get them in a really good spot. And you have all sorts of controls with the steering wheel. Visibility in this car is pretty good as well. You have a really huge windshield. You can see the aggressive hood. It looks pretty nice. And then looking out of all of your mirrors and everything, you have a pretty good view around. And over your left and right shoulder, it's actually pretty good to look around this car. As far as some of the fit and finish, it's a pretty nicely appointed car with the leather. You know, it, there's a lot of plastic in here, but everything looks pretty nice. So I think it's a pretty good blend of what you're expecting in a car like this. As far as the fun modes, we will go ahead and put us into the sport mode, hit the paddle to go into the manual mode. We have all of your different gears and then toggling us into sport mode. We get the really cool gauge cluster and everything. I like how Ford has done that, especially with this being a full digital screen. It looks super cool and you know, most cars don't have something that looks like that. So let's go right into the track mode where we're going to get our exhaust and everything. If I hit okay. And it has a really good rumble, obviously the Coyote motor. <laughs> Just barely touching it, we have better roads coming up. But it's cool that you do get quite a lot of different drive modes and everything. And then if we toggle it all the way back down into the normal mode, we can then put us back in the drive and the car kind of tones down a little bit. So with that said, we'll go back into the track mode. My only downfall with it, when you tap those toggles, there's a little bit of lag. And every time you tap it the first time, you then have to tap it again to actually change the mode. So it gets a little bit annoying pressing the button so many times. And then a lot of times it comes up with more things on the screen telling you to say okay and things. So that's my only little gripe. So the 10 speed, not my favorite transmission, the manual is the way to go for a Mustang, but it is pretty quick in the shifts. <laughs> uh, you do have to wait a little bit sometimes if you're not really on it, there's a little bit of a delay in the paddle, but the actual shifting is pretty quick. So when you're on the gas, it's really quick the way it shifts and everything like that. There is a little bit of like a kick in the back each gear change. And with 10 gears, I feel like it does take a little bit of time getting used to that many gears. It can feel like there's just too many gears. Like right now I'm in six gear and uh, it doesn't really downshift too many times for me. When I want to go down, it takes a minute. But overall, you know, pretty smooth transmission the way it works when you're just in normal drive and everything, letting the car do all the shifting and everything, it's pretty normal and comfortable, I would say. Um, the manual still is the way to go, but if you're gonna be drag racing the car or just really daily driving you with a ton of commuting and traffic, obviously the automatic might be a better choice. Do a quick acceleration and then we'll switch to POV. So we'll go to second gear. It's decently quick. 
quick, you know, it doesn't really throw you back in your seat. I think the manual, you just get a lot more fun out of it than the automatic. All right, so switching now over to the POV, we'll tone it up into the track mode and then put us into the sport and manual. So not too bad around turns in the car for being a little bit on the heavy side. You can see the transmission. Definitely quick, once you're in the higher RPMs, you really have to use the motor. If you're in too high of a gear, lower RPM, it's not, uh, it's pretty boggy, I would say. But you know, if you're in the good RPM and in a good gear, yeah, it carries its way pretty well once you're moving. So it's nice to have that linear power band. I think that's a really good selling point of this 5.0. Really, really solid, smooth power. And then just a good look at everything for the view out. Very roomy and practical car. You do get a lot with a Mustang. You get that practicality and you do get some fun factor and being, you know, V8 and everything, it's got a good power plant. My only downfall, like I said, when you tap this, there's just a lot of different drive modes and you can't go back. So if I accidentally go into drag strip mode, I gotta go all the way around back into it. So that can kind of get a little bit annoying. And then if you're in sport mode here, you have to go back into drive to actually go into all of it. So that's the only downside. I wish it was a little bit easier to do the drive modes. I love the toggles, but it just gets a little annoying up there. But overall, pretty solid car, like I mentioned. You really can't go wrong with a Mustang. This is kind of in between a Challenger and the Camaro. The Camaro is a little bit more performance oriented. I think it's a better sports car. And then the Challenger has so much more space, but it's so big and heavy, it doesn't really handle well. And it's pretty slow feeling being so heavy. So the Mustang is kind of that good happy medium. You can really do it all and um, not really too many complaints if you want just a good, well-rounded, fun to drive car. And then slow speed driving, it's pretty maneuverable. The turning circle is not too bad. I wouldn't say it's the tightest, but nonetheless, you know, you have parking sensors and camera and it's a pretty easy car to pinpoint. Let's do one last acceleration. We'll get into the track mode. So yeah, like I said, it takes a little bit getting into everything and then we'll tone up the steering into sport. And see right there, I had a toggle I feel so many times uh, when I accidentally overshot it. That's the only drawback. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Very, very smooth car to drive. So I think that is about then it for the 2022 Ford Mustang GT Premium Coupe. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for plenty more content to come. And then once again, big shout out and thank you to Mooresville Ford for providing this car for today's video. Definitely take a look at their website linked down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.